My name is Nicholas Heeman. I am uh, currently an uh, anthropology and art history undergraduate student at Virginia Commonwealth University. Um, I study Islamic arts and culture. Um, today I have the pleasure of, of introducing Not Dr. Nada Shabut, pr professor of art history and the director of contemporary art and Muslim cultural studies initiative at the University of North Texas. Dr. Shabut's many achievements include serving as founding president of the Association for Modern and Contemporary Art from the Arab world, Iran, and Turkey, and as consulting founding director of research at Mataf Arab Museum of Modern Art, Doha. In addition to her contributions to numerous volumes and exhibitions on the topic of modern art of the Arab world, Dr. Shabut is the author of Modern Arab Art, Formation of Arab Aesthetics, published in 2007. Today, Dr. Shabut will be sharing with us her presentation, Contemporary Traje Trajectories, Iraqi Art in Context. Please join me in welcoming Dr. Shabut. Thank you. Thank you for the introduction, and thank you for everyone for being here, and for um, uh, Sheila and um, Jonathan for uh, convening this um, session. Um, I almost, almost wish, and by the way, it's true, can't see any faces, so it's kind of weird. Um, I almost wish you asked me to, to speak on something else, um, but, well, so I will speak about what you asked me too, but following um, Her Royal Highness Wajdan's um, excellent presentation, I think we are reminded that we are still trapped by definitions. Um, I suppose the... Um, uh, presentation also reminds us that those present uh, those definitions are something that you know were made by humans and that we should in fact challenge them and um, not accept them uncritically also luckily uh, her royal highness sort of covered some of the iraqi artists that i'm not um, talking about so you can think about this as a continuation of um, of her presentation to think about contemporary Iraqi art today, we are confronted by several other challenges than the ones um, just listed before me. To begin with, the notion of Iraqi is clearly riddled with many conflicting issues of identity. What does it mean to be Iraqi, and what does it mean to be Iraqi today? There is no doubt that the Iraqi identity, as has been conceived of during the 20th century, is a product of modernity and the nation state. While we can argue about its colonial roots, there is also no denying its post-colonial construct. <clears throat> Today, however, it is much more complicated. The notion of identity in relation to place has been tested and contested in the 21st century by migration and diaspora, which necessarily defies rigid cultural frames in terms of regional affinities and national identities. This transformation in identity has been unfolding within the dynamics of a global construct, but for certain groups of people, it has been abrupt in its intensity. Within Iraq's most recent postmodern history, there have been various shifts and that drastically changed the subtleties and structure of the country and its people. The sanctions of the 1990s, the 2003 US-led invasion, and the instability of the government that followed. Many Iraqis have been forced to specifically negotiate all of this as refugees. Secondly, what does it mean to be a contemporary Iraqi artist? Contemporaneity as a condition necessitates an engagement with the now. As such, contemporary artists are expected to engage with current issues of concern socially, culturally, politically, and or historically. Contemporary art as a term, however, implies more than the present, as it is the term under which art production from the postmodern till now is loosely categorized. The term thus carries a number of other implications than the simple art of the now that includes styles, media, etc. Collectively, however, the art of the contemporary is qualified as more socially conscious than previous periods and in today's world of global issues. How do we then think of contemporary artists with connections to Iraq? 
What I, uh, I, what I will attempt now is to sort of contextualize certain aspects of the contemporary production by artists from around the world who at some level connect with an Iraqi identity with the aim to theorize threads of trajectory and trajectories as well as locate their production within a wider imagination for the contemporary development of the region. The artists I will be looking at are mostly what we think of as diaspora artists. Let's try to figure this out. Okay. <clears throat> To look back at the development of modern art in Iraq, the issue of identity and continuity were paramount in the artist negotiations of modernism. In 1951, artist Jawad Salim and Shakir Hassan Saeed founded the Baghdad Group for Modern Art, Jamaat Baghdad al Fan al-Hadith, and had their inaugural exhibition at the Museum of Iraqi Costumes. At the opening, Al Saeed read their manifesto aloud, and Salim delivered his impromptu speech, titled The Renewal of Art, describing the challenges of engaging an audience for whom modern art was wholly unfamiliar. In their manifesto, the group declared their intentions to be contemporary, but to specifically, quote, honor the, the stronghold of the Iraqi art of painting that collapsed after the school of Yahya al-Wasati, the Mesopotamian school of the 13th century AD, and in this way, we will reconnect the continuity that has been broken since the fall of Baghdad at the hands of the Mongols." End of quote. Their task was clear, and it was locally centered. Moreover, there was a very pronounced optimism in the tone of the manifesto. Salim, who had kept a diary from 1941 until 1945 while in Baghdad, in the period between his studies in Rome, 1939 to 40, and prior to his studying in, in England, 46 to 48, detailing the activities and aspirations of the paradoxical war years of Allied occupation in the Middle East. In an entry dated January 15, 1944, recalling some of the artistic discussions in Baghdad, he wrote, as for Baghdad, given its nascent modernity, Art must also be affected by these sweeping developments to a greater or lesser extent. However, I have high hopes that Iraq will have a promising future in painting. First of all, because the Iraqi artist is relatively sheltered from the war and can thus dictate, dedicate himself more fully to his work. And secondly, because the circumstances of the war have allowed him to come into contact with various foreign artists whether from England, Poland, or elsewhere." End of quote. An interesting statement to contemplate in relation to current situations. Maybe we can come back to that um, at some point, I don't know when. Most of the art experiments that followed in Iraq since the formation of the Baghdad Group for Modern Art continued in one form or another the perceived and imagined historical continuity by invoking elements from Iraq's history, be it Mesopotamian or Islamic. Those experiments yielded exciting results, but also coined a vocabulary that is largely recognized still today as Iraqi. Nevertheless, while the key artists of Iraqi modernism remained effective through their teaching at the Institute and College of Fine Arts, the introspective years of sanctions when Iraqi artists who remained inside of Iraq were isolated and marginalized from the art development of the world caused re-examination and re-evaluation of the earlier periods. It essentially initiated a new wave of negotiating an Iraqi identity that, unlike that of its predecessors, had a very inward and reactive perspective. So, I mean, if we look at um, the 1940s and 50s, we can think of an international outlook and then a regional outlook in the 60s to the 80s. It has created a gap between Iraqi artists who remained inside and those who migrated and settled elsewhere prior to the 1990s. Interestingly, the migration of the 1990s was seen as temporary relocation, and thus artists who went to, for, to Amman, for example, were not seen as outside of Iraq. But that situation fully changed after 2003, when the majority of of that isolated generation of Iraqi artists had to leave Iraq for fear for their lives, and this time with the intention of permanent migration. The relationship with politics thus changed as well. 
I will now look at the work of a number of artists of the diaspora, those artists who have the space and luxury to reflect and negotiate on their connection to Iraq. However, it is important to point out that there is much that we don't know about what is happening inside of Iraq. But we know that the gap between the inside and outside artist is becoming harder to bridge. On the outset, the connection of the diaspora artist with the land and culture of Iraq shifted from a direct engagement to the realm of memory and imagination. They not only were confronted with all of the new developments of art on a global level, they came to confront their own delusions as well. In a recent conversation with artist Hana Malala, and reflecting back on her work during the 90s in Iraq, she said, quote, what we were producing in Iraq was something out of its history, not even modernism, but rather very outdated art. The illusion of my identity as an Iraqi artist was translated into a repetition of what we inherited from the West, and we claimed it as our identity. End of quote. Her assessment is as harsh for the art currently produced inside of Iraq. She says, quote, we need education first to understand all of that. Even now, my generation who are still trapped inside of Iraq are repeating the same thing. They are still isolated. There is no connection with the outside world. From the 90s until now, even with the internet, the connection is still constrained. We have no institutions to study this phenomenon. Our art production of the 20th century is not contextualized. For now, it appears lacking when presented." End of quote. Born in Iraq in 1958, Malala studied at the Baghdad University of Fine Arts and earned a PhD in philosophy of painting from the University of Baghdad. A key member of the 80s generation, which she considers essential to her understanding of the relationship to Iraq, Malala was a student of Shakir Hassan al Said. She endured life in Baghdad through the Iraq-Iran war, the Gulf War, the invasion of 2003, but increasing threats to her life and inability to survive as a woman artist in Iraq eventually forced her out. She later settled in, in London, where she lives today. What she dubbed as the ruins technique, which includes burning, distressing, and obliterating of material, she argued as the visual signifier of a cultural resistance and the carrier of their identity as Iraqi artists. She thinks of this as something that her generation of the, the 80s um, uh, in, uh, indulged in. Malala's interest and concern grew and shifted with the passing of time and what she first perceived as exile, but then came to realize its liberating aspects. Much of her theoretical engagement with art, mythology, religion, and postulating the abstract continued, but her scope of vision widened. Her symbolism, negotiation of Iraq's history, and perceived growing distance are anything but simple where the intellectual, historical, and personal can continually intertwine. The complexity of her images speak of survival, endurance, triumph, and a persistent need to explore and understand a paralocal. I mean, off my script. If one would look at some of this work, one could actually perhaps negotiate an Islamic reference in some of them, but hardly call them Islamic art. This is not something I'm going to necessarily, um, as much as I'm dying to, um, you know, engage in. Um, so, but please excuse if I sort of, you know, <laughs> um, uh, you know, sometimes touch on it. Because, for example, oh, this is some of her later uh, work. And this is a project that she's trying to get back and engage inside of Iraq. And so this is sort of a project that she directed while being outside of Iraq with colleagues inside. Born in Baghdad in 1981, Haif Kahraman grew up in Iraq and Sweden. She studied art in Italy and web design in Sweden and is currently based in California. Her work explores a compendium of current issues of general human concern, 
alienation, marginalization, loss, displacement, social destruction, gender empowerment, and oppression, the refugee experience, and the narrative and visual vocabulary of diasporic cultures. Her interest in the body as object and subject, in particular, the concept of gender and female identity, is manifest in all of her visual articulation. In various ways, her work presents various angles of a self-portrait. Kahraman's relationship with Iraq is now based on distance and explored through memories and research. In her later works, she engages with fragmentations of these memories in a yearning to bridge that distance and merge the past and present into her realities. It is a process of reuniting her two selves, she says. Significantly, as the temporal distance increases, she moves beyond the abstract to engage with specific sites, forms, and formats of meaning to Iraq as related directly to an intricate aspect of her distinctive synthetic aesthetic that draw on her diasporic as well as her instinctive childhood experience. In 2010, Kahraman explored the Abbasid Malwiya, an element of Iraq's heritage that has been in critical jeopardy, lacking care during the 90s and then direct destruction through bombing and looting after 2003. She references debathification that instigated the removal and dismantling of many important historical mo uh, monuments. Here, in this work, Kahraman studies and, and populates plans of historical houses in Baghdad. In How Iraqi Are You? That's the title of the project. Kahraman navigates her own diasporic experience and identity in reference to not only memory, but a historical continuation that was specifically the hallmark concern for Iraqi modern artists in the mid 20th century. She, as did members of the Baghdad Group for Modern Art, invoked the 12th century Maqamat al-Hariri as her site of engagement. The manuscript, considered a major example of the Baghdad school of painting that flourished in the 12th century, speaks of both glory and destruction. In her latest series, series of work, Reweaving Migrant Inscriptions, Kahraman researched the mahafa, the fan, the Iraqi, specific Iraqi fan, which is woven from um, uh, uh, palm reeds, as a site of memory. In, in such works, one perhaps can speak of a contemporary Islamic. Okay. All right. Um, Adil Abdin was one of the first to become widely recognized Iraqi artists of the younger generation on a global scale. Born in Baghdad in 1973, he received his BFA from the College of Fine Arts, University of Baghdad in 2000. After migrating to Finland, he received his MFA from the Helsinki Academy of Fine Arts in 2005 and continues to think of the city as home, although been spending most of his time in Amman, Jordan. One can think of Abdin as particularly further complicating the notion of identity. His work has been included at various national pavilions at the Venice Biennale. The Nordic Pavilion at the 52nd Venice Biennale in 2007, the Iraq Pavilion at the 54th Venice Biennale in 2011, and the 56th Venice Biennale in 2015, he was invited to represent his 2008 mixed media installation, I'm Sorry, at the official Iranian Pavilion. While still living in Iraq, Abdin focused on painting, believing that the concept of the work should dictate the choice of medium. However, after leaving Iraq, he found that the new arguments he was formulating needed mobility and actual physical space. Thus, he shifted to video and installation. Life in Iraq, particularly in its current state, is central to Ab Abdin's negotiations of culture, displacement, and alienation. Abdin's work delivers specific arguments highlighting issues that have affected him personally. In his efforts to universalize these concerns, he relies on humor and irony in articulating the obvious. In his celebrated Abdin Travels, um, 2006, Abdin established a travel agency to 
quote, promote vacation trips to Iraq. The agency was executed to imitate a real product. Contradictions and sarcasm were vehicles to raise questions about politics, reality, propaganda, and notions of marketability. Okay, so I'm either, oh, okay. That's what happened, sorry. So that's the Abdin um, Travel Agency. And this is um, Three Love Song, which explores the multiple ways to use and manipulate image to create juxtapositions of meaning from the mundane to the extreme. This piece examines terror and love and how facades are played through song, specifically Iraqi songs that were commissioned by Saddam Hussein to glorify him. The installation syncs three stylized music videos, lounge, jazz, and pop, performed by young, blonde, and seductive women. The lyrics are sung in Arabic, within the Iraqi dialect, and are subtitled in English and Arabic. The singers do not understand the words. Instead, they are directed to perform vocally and by gesture, as though the songs were traditional, passionate love songs. And of course, it you know, creates uh, the irony of tension. In Al Warqa, Abdin reaches further in history to a poem by Ibn Sina, which compares the journey of the soul to the flight of a dove. In his verses, the soul represents a timeless, eth um, eth um, ethereal entity that soars beyond the body after death. Symphony is a tribute to Iraqi teenagers who were stoned to death by religious extremists in Baghdad in 2012 because of the way they dressed and looked, their strange hair and tight clothes, what is known as the MO uh, phenomenon. This is still from um, the video. Born in 1966 in Iraq, Wafa Bilal, became one of many Iraqis who fled the terror of life under Saddam Hussein. And I guess we're all going to go to, his, to the opening of his exhibition um, later today. Detained in various camps from 1991, he was resettled in the USA in 1993. In Iraq, Bilal studied geography, but also painted in his spare time. In the US, he studied art at the University of New Mexico and received his BFA in 1999 and then an MFA from the School of Art Institute of Chicago. Bilal's work has always aimed at engaging the audience and forcing them out of their zones of comfort. From the beginning, Bilal was a political artist. He believes that an artist, I quote, does not have the privilege to mediate on aesthetics alone, end of quote. To him, Art is a form of activism. Believing in the inelectability of media in the global age, his work exploits its ability to command attention. Bilal is aware that his work is mainly directed towards and engages American audiences. His work transports politics into accessible codes of understanding through interaction. By enacting the political within a public sphere that fuses reality with games, Bilal takes full advantage of new media. The juxtaposition of the real and the hyperreal creates a simulacrum that opens up the space for new narratives. His themes explore psychology and the effect of war, displacement and surveillance, while also examining relationships between proximity and distance, the real and the virtual. Increasingly, Bilal also uses his body as a vehicle for transforming the message, for transporting the message, and to create endurance performances. For his 2007 installation, Domestic Tension. I'm not moving it, I don't know how this is. Um, Bilal spent a month in a Chicago gallery with a pin, uh, paintball gun that people could shoot at him over the internet. And he has many stories to tell about that. This is another um, project where he sort of um, uh, exposed himself to uh, harm, rather. So in this project, he um, announced that he's either going to um, um, waterboard a dog or an Iraqi. And as he says, there were um, loud cries about 
waterboarding a dog. So the Iraqi um, won the contest and was, and he actually waterboarded himself. The Ashes series evokes war, destruction, and their impact through the absence of human life in once occupied homes. The images explore the obliteration of privacy as consumed by media. They exist in the aftermath of atrocity with the presence of the human spirit represented only by the monochromatic whiteness of the ashes. Reconstructing the destroyed spaces serves as an act of reclamation of both the space and Bilal's memories. Bilal's reconstruction went beyond the personal to further explore what could have been. In Canto III, Bilal provides the opportunity to the Iraqi people to deliver the unfinished job of a tribute to Saddam Hussein pla planned by members of the Ba'ath Party in Iraq in celebration of his greatness. I quote, they commissioned a golden statue in his likeness to be propelled into space where it would orbit Earth for all eternity, gazing upon his pan-Arab lands and its, and its enemies with the eye of, God, of the gods. End of quote. And this is actually um, is the pre, uh, predecessor of, of, I guess, what we will have, um, uh, what the gallery, the exhibition that he will have opening for today. More recently, Bilal reconstruction, Bilal's reconstruction's efforts further blurred art and activism while equally navigating the new obsession with archives and drawing from his personal memories. were destroyed. To this day, its students have few books to study from. For my exhibition at the Art Gallery of Windsor, I'm building a system of exchange that will connect people directly with each other in order to resurrect the College of Fine Arts Library. Viewers like yourself will be a critical part of this exchange. Your participation in this Kickstarter will replace the white box in my exhibition with the new educational textbooks. The donation will enable us to purchase books from a list compiled by the faculty. In exchange, donors will receive a limited edition artist book from the exhibition. At the end of the exhibition, all donated books will be shipped to the College of Fine Art at the University of Baghdad to begin rebuilding their library. Baghdad has faced such cultural destruction before. During the Islamic Golden Age in the 13th century, an invading Mongol army set fire to all libraries in Baghdad, including the famed House of Wisdom. Legend says the House of Wisdom library was thrown into the Tigris River to create a bridge of books for the army to cross. The pages bled ink into the river for seven days, at the end of which the books were drained of knowledge. But when the books start bleeding, the people of Baghdad started rebuilding their city. With your help, we can come together to rectify cultural violence and begin the process of rebuilding Iraq for future generations. Thank you for participating. And I'm happy to say that this has been actually a successful project so far. But this project specifically sort of, you know, um, uh, takes activism and, and contemporary art, particularly its uh, engagement with the social consciousness to a more sort of um, hands-on uh, level. I was told that if I'm too late that, you know, um, Sheila and, and Jonathan are going to push me off the stage, so I'm trying to avoid that, so. Sadiq Quesh al Faraji was born in Baghdad in 1960 and studied at the Institute of Fine Arts and the Academy of Fine Arts in Iraq. In 2000, he studied graphic design at the, in the Netherlands, where he is now based. His haunting mixed media compositions explore a variety of themes focused on existence, the universal human condition, the experience of exile, and fragmentation. He has said of his work, quote, my intention was to decenter the viewer's ego by dwarfing him and reminding him that we are stories that play out of a short while and after, afterward disappear forever. End of code. 
this is the house of my father built that. Um, and I think actually um, Venetia Porter might talk about um, Ali's boat, because I think the British Museum bought something. Driven by storms, Ali's boat describes a simple exchange between Al Faraji and his nephew. Ali, who expressed his desire to escape war torn Baghdad in a letter to his uncle. After receiving his message, however, Faraji was haunted by the image of a small boat that Ali included to illustrate his dream of floating away from the devastation of Iraq after 2003 to the safety of the Netherlands, where, where um, uh, Al Faraji is. The message reminded Al Faraji of his similar dream as a young man who longed to escape the misery of his impoverished neighborhood in Baghdad, Sadr city known today, in, um, Saddam City, Thawra, which became an enduring site of death and mourning during the Iran-Iraq war in the 1980s. While the above examples uh, navigate the career of contemporary diaspora artists who within their work invoke a specific connection to Iraq, that one, that one can easily argue is both that of force, choice and force, they remain disconnected of what is happening inside of Iraq, despite several attempts to reconstruct, re-educate and remember. Their relationship to artists inside of Iraq is necessarily unequal. They thus contribute to a fragmented vision of what might be considered as contemporary Iraqi art. Of course, one can argue, must we even, if we are contesting terms like Islamic, then should we not also equally contest identity terms? So do, must we speak of an Iraqi art? The complication of this notion and Iraqi identity is further multiplied in efforts to showcase the work in a national representation, such as the Venice Biennale. The successive iteration of the Iraqi pavilion at the Biennale since 2011 reflects similar complexity and confusion as to what constitute the art and identity of the visual creations of today's Iraq. The 2011, celebrated as Iraq's return to the biennial after 35 years, included Adil Abdin and presented new works by Halim Al Karim, Ahmed Sudani, Ali Asaf, Azad Nanakli, and uh, Walid Shiti, all of whom are diaspora, diaspora artists. In fact, the curator, Mary Angela Sh uh, uh, Shrot, was criticized, uh, as well as the, I'm sorry, in fact, the Eroya Foundation was severely criticized for that and for employing the American curator, Mary Angela uh, Schroth. The following pavilions, thus, were very careful to connect with the inside, yet in the form of nostalgia or evocation of the past. So this is Welcome to Iraq, um, 2013, by the British curator, Jonathan Watkins, um, which sort of set up the, um, um, the pavilion as an Iraqi house, of course, you know, presenting the problematic of whose Iraqi house, um, but um, setting up with uh, rooms that were, uh, that presented the work of several artists from the inside, which um, sort of um, was um, um, uh, critically received by uh, established Iraqi artists, since this work seemed to um, present mostly um, uh, amateur artists or students, and um, as Hannah Malala would argue, completely out of the, the sequence of its history. This is Invisible Beauty, um, the 56th uh, biennial, which presented um, uh, works by several of um, uh, Artists, including you know, established artists inside of Iraq. This is the archaic, the official pavilion of the 57th uh, biennial, which actually sort of looked at the work, looked at the theme archaic, and presented works from archaeology as well as Jawad Salim and Shakir Hassan Said. As do the artists of diaspora, it seems the image of Iraq is not yet possible without being seen in the reflection of its past. 
But there are several attempts inside of, of Baghdad to practice art, just for the joy of practicing art. Its definition, of course, remains something to be problematic in the future. Thank you. Thank you.